Mediterranean Dialogues is an event that brings leaders, diplomats together from all over the world, from the Middle East, from Europe, and they have to confront each other and start to know each other. They have to dialogue. Today, we want to go a step further. We want to have the emotions. We want to bring you in contact with emotions. And we'll do it with a very, very special person, with Ayham Ahmad. Ayham Ahmad, probably you know him as the pianist of the Yarmouk camp. And he now lives in Germany. And we'll link up with him. Ayham, good evening. And thank you for being with us. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Great to see you all. That's wonderful. I mean, now to see you with a piano, which is for you indispensable, but to see you in that kind of setting, it took a long, long time and a lot of suffering. Uh, yeah. You have become world famous for one video and one song. And you had a piano, wasn't this one, and you were wearing a green shirt. You were in the Yarmouk camp. That is the camp, the Palestinian camp in Damascus that everybody yeah. will remember. Could you go back to that moment when you were playing the piano on the street? What did music mean to you? You said music was beauty. I had to play. Yeah, this is was uh, in my memory uh, very, uh, have a lot of uh, tasting and a lot of thought. I remember in this day when, when, when I back, I remember the tired from back to carry the water because we don't have water in this day. I remember the fight between uh, Marwan and Miraz Saeed who should push the piano more because we was three young guys and one guy, he was f uh, making photo. I remember Niraz, he made this video but and wait, this first photo. First of all, you he, have to say, uh, that was 2012, 2013, 2014. Yeah. That was Syria and the war was terrible. And there was also Daesh, ISIS. So you were in that kind of situation. No, it was not looks like that. In 2012, have war, sure, but we don't have IS in this time. The IS come to Yarmouk camp in, 2000, in the end of 2014. We have Assad and it's bombing the camp was. To, to speak it clearly. And you wrote, you kept on playing. What did music mean to you in that moment where you, you could lose your life any second, but you kept on playing? Why? Yeah, because we die anyway. A lot of people dying in Yarmouk camp, more than 160 people dying from hunger because the regime, the Assad regime, closed all Yarmouk camp. We don't have water, we don't have food. And in this time, really, we don't have IS. IS come in the end and make everything more horrible. It's keep me uh, great and fresh to play piano because I have a lot of great community was supporting me, young guy behind me. Sure, I was only in the photo, but a lot of people support me. And also my family was a big part of this support. Without my family, without all this beautiful community was behind the piano. I don't can make nothing. But tell and this me, why is community. Was it, uh, you know? was it so important for them to hear you play the piano while they were getting bombed and they had to worry about staying alive? Why was it so important for yeah. them that you would play? Yeah, for, for all of us, piano was a piece of peace and symbol of peace. And this is, was really our motivation to go on the music. The music, it was our. The, the light in the end of this uh, darkness, because nothing was good, nothing was uh, fine, and we die maybe tomorrow, maybe after tomorrow, and you begin think about small things make you happy. And the piano was this, the only one make everybody hear it happy, maybe me and the children and the young people behind the piano. Would you play us the piece that made you, let's say, famous because of that video of that where you are playing in the streets, the streets destroyed by war, there is you with this yeah. tiny piano and you are playing I Forgot My Name.
باسمه نسيت الأحرف والمعاني نسيت الكلمات التي أنطق منها الآن نسيت صوتي صورتي حتى مكاني آه نسيت شق الطريق إلى السماء إلى الإنسان للمجد الذي كان فلسطيني فلسطيني آه أنا سوري أنا سوري سادي أنا سوري Thank you, I have. Now, I'll ask you to, to explain, because uh, I don't speak Arabic, and I just noticed that the music is very dramatic, and the song is very desperate. Take us back then. When did you write this song, and how was it written? Because it has a meaning. I don't write the text. Friend of me, his name, uh, Zakaria Al Khatib. He write these texts for his wife. She died two days before because the soldier don't allowed her to get out from Yarmouk to get birth. And she fall down in the street and die. And he came with a small piece of paper and he write, I forget my name, forget my remember, forget my dream. And I was so stupid in this day and I tell him, oh, this doesn't work, this is not good text. And he tell me this story behind, and I was so sorry for him and for me because it was a horrible situation also in Yarmoukam. He was under siege and all that. And I tell him, I will do that song for your wife and for all of us. And we, I sing, forget my name, forget my remember, and I add Palestine, Palestine, because we are Palestinian refugee in this camp. We are since uh, 1948 living in this camp, sure. We are we living were in a already lot of born a refugee. Place. Yeah. Second now, now the second time refugee in Germany. And once you wrote and this song, but he gave you the song and you put the music, which is yeah. uh, what you added to it. And how did that music come out? Where did you inspire? I mean, what was the inspiration behind it? The inspiration behind it is uh, empty eyes, how he came to me and he how he was really desperate and also 
all of us, I also was losing a friend of me because he died from hunger shortly before, two or three days before when I composed this piece. The whole angry and shouting from inside of the soul, it came with this, ah, da, 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 with this sad, sad uh, tema. And also inspiring more me, this is to play it in this day. The, the whole situation when we make this video, uh, it was also, when you look to, to the place how it destroyed, you begin thinking about this beautiful memory before the war and how everything destroyed. And you begin feel angry from inside and uh, feeling uh, lost. And this is what uh, I try to bring with the music. And when you, when you played this uh, song, did your friend, the doctor who had lost his wife, did it yeah. help him to overcome his grief? I don't think it's helped him, but it was part of uh, the way how he can communicate with the situation. Maybe to write for her, to speak with her. I don't think he is fine now. He is living in another camp in uh, near Idlib, and the situation also there very horrible. They living in tent under rain, and the situation is really horrible. And this is, is doesn't uh, doesn't give him a lot. This is song, but it was part of the of the communication. But, but for you, yeah, writing these songs, putting into music your feelings, did that ease the pain? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's also for me, because I, I was playing this piece uh, for, for him and for myself. It's given me a lot of... Uh, yeah, you feel empty in such a situation, and uh, the music, it's fill you, and this is... Pain, it's horrible and uh, horrible feeling. And this is the music, it's uh, take you to place you can overcome. I am not sure for, for uh, Ziad how the situation, but, uh, but uh, the music, it's bring me to the well, place to one overcome the pain. I come, in one interview, you said that you wanted music for you is beauty. And when they destroyed yeah. your piano, you kept on playing, you had another one, I mean, you, for you, it was important to keep on playing music. Could you explain yeah. to that, to us, what it meant to you then, go back those five years when you were still in Yarmouk, what did music mean to you and why was it so important? The music, it's back to, uh, to, the, to uh, not only for me, it was also for the community important. After when they destroyed the piano also, the young girls, they came again and knocked the door and asked me to play again. And I found uh, this is so important for them. Sure, after destroying the piano, I begin to think a lot about to not put my family in danger, sure, because I, as in 2015, when they destroyed my my piano in my birthday for 17 Who destroyed April. your piano? Could you remember I that? Is. I is. And why? Yeah, I is destroy my, my piano because uh, they destroyed all, uh, all the country. It's not only mm. the piano and they, they hate the beauty. And they, they say the music is forbidden and all that, blah, blah, blah. But I think it uh, it's doesn't mean nothing. And you kept it's on playing. They, I kept on playing with the keyboard because it was easy to carry and easy to run. And you knew yeah, that... Yeah, sure, you should to run. With a keyboard, but you, are, you knew that that meant that you could be killed. The first time they destroyed your piano, next time they could have killed you or your family. Yeah, sure, it was also the first time when they catch me, they will kill me because I ran away after when they begin fire the piano. And with help of my friend Marwan and my father, I, I am live now. Yeah, uh, dying, it's, uh, it's, or still life or die, it's not so important was for us in, t in this time. It was, uh, yeah, anyway, you will die. You will die from hunger, you will die from thirsty, you will die from bump. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I don't need to say, I ish bin mutig, in German we say, uh, I'm courageous. courage or something. Yeah, I am not courage, but, but, uh, 
it was really the community, you know, without, without those young girl come to the home after when they're firing the piano and ask me to sing. And yeah, they come and smiling and they are hungry and they don't eat since three, four days. But they come to the door and knock and yeah, we need to sing Yarmouk Miss You and all those songs. And you begin to think about what such an energy, why I should to destroy it with my a stupid thing about maybe I will die. Maybe we will die together. You know, when we are five, six people dying together, it's fine. But I don't need to die alone. This is the also the whole thing, how it's become about death and life for your mind. You wrote one song for one of those girls that was killed while she was listening to your music, Zainab. Could you she play it for us? She was singing with us. Yeah. Time passing. And it's Zainab, she was singing with us and uh, was shot, shot near the piano. Zainab Aham. Can you tell us who this little girl was? Yeah, Zainab was a little girl, 11 to 12 years old. She lost her father during the war also because he was killed in 2013, I think, or in the beginning of two, uh, the end of 2012. And the mother, she was every time hiding this news from Zainab and she said for him, her, he is sick and he is outside from Yermuk to recover. Uh, Zainab was one of the group, 10, uh, ten people, um, to, 10 young girls and boys singing, and we call it uh, the Blossom of Yarmouk. We have the band name 
blossom of your mook. And we were singing together uh, a lot of song I composed it for the group. And she was standing near the piano and the sniper decided to kill her, maybe to kill me or to kill everybody. Sniper, a stupid soldier, I don't know from who. Yeah, because in 2014, we was between the groups. This is me in the army of Assad closing the way to, to Yarmouk. We have beginning of uh, the time of the Jabhat al-Nusra was inside Yarmouk, the Syrian army. We was really playing the piano and the music in the destroyed street and between the fight. I don't take the children to the dangerous place, but was all our life dangerous. This is what I should to explain and yeah. She was near the piano. We were singing Yarmouk Miss You. This is a wonderful song. I make, I compose it in major for the children. Everybody sing his piece of the song. And suddenly the blood was everywhere. And it's horrible, horrible time for me. I still remember this. Sometime you, when you come to Germany and you have all this time to, to think about and to, to be... Uh, um, Relax remember. in your mind, all this, uh, all this remember, bad remember and bad memory, it's came. But it's very, very important for me to tell about those stories, what happened in Syria, and it still happened until now. You to the people understand why, why it's, uh, maybe we should to change some things. You said you were playing Yermuk, I Miss You, which is another song you wrote then. And that you, could you yeah. play that and tell us then what... The words mean and why you wrote it in those days. Yeah. Yarmou, Monsieur, I will play it, and after I will explain some things. <laughs> تتمرمر يلا عودوا يا أحباب بك فينا طال الغياب سوريا عيونا عم تبكي بتسأل ليش تركوني شعبي صفدوا لبي ولجاعوني وعن شارع حيفا طمنوني ويلي قاعد بيت سيا كلنا من حبك يا خيا ويلي قاعد وين ما كان كلنا من حبك يا خيا ويلي قاعد بإيطاليا كلنا من حبك يا خيا قاعد وين ما كان كل ما من حبك يا خيا but it's the first joyous song that I hear from you yeah, yeah. this is uh, why it's joy because it's uh, made for the children and it's make me really happy when I play it and I remember this sweet Children, how they was, everybody make the rhyme of uh, the song and somebody singing about his mom and somebody singing about his grandmom and somebody he sing about his uncle to come back to to, uh, to Yarmouk. The, the, the text was very flexible. It was only two part of text uh, fix. Ya sha'ab al-ghali ya mahajjar bi kaffi barat marran. Please come back to Yarmouk. Please when you come back, the life will be better and looks like that. We should speak about Yarmouk was more than 700,000 people living in Yarmouk and during the siege it was only 60,000, mm. 60 to 70,000 and uh, the people missing the, the neighbors and the, the relative and, and this is what the message of Yarmouk misses you. Please come back to Yarmouk and uh, yeah, it was... So nice song, and suddenly it's bring also wonderful memory how I was playing that in the street before when Zainab shot. And it's also bring me this is day where she was 
near the piano and shot. But this is we should speak about. We have more than 25,000 of children killed in the Syrian war. And this is big number. It's not only Zainab. It's a whole generation. But, yeah. And in your songs, there is another song that you wanted to play, Abu the Waterman. It's a descriptive song of the situation. Yeah. Because you had no water, you had to go and yeah. fetch the water, and going to fetch the water is a very dangerous affair when you're under siege, when you yeah. can get shot. So once you, you have to go to get the water, you don't know if you come back. And so you wrote this song for one man who had to carry these water canisters for his whole family. Yeah. Can we please hear I it? I will play it. Yes. This is the song for the waterman. 
Yeah. Who runs but, and has to carry heavy weights during the war. Yeah. Now and this is also the music. Yeah. How it's running sometime and sometime it's slowly and I try to to make his movement in the music. Because he runs when he has to get under cover and he's slow when he's got the heavy weight of the water. Yeah. yeah. Really. In August 2015 you decided that it was too dangerous to stay in Yarmouk and you decided to leave. Do you remember? Not really decide. Sorry? It's not really decide. You found the way to get out. But when did you think that you had to leave? Because it is also a decision that you have to take. When did you say, I have to get out? After one month of the siege, and you begin to see the people of three, four months in 2012. In the end of 2012, the people begin dying, and I have a small child, his name Ahmed. He was fresh born three years. And I have family, I have my father and my mother, they are old. And you put the, all the family in risk because they were staying with me. This is mean I am not only alone was in Yarmouk. You begin to think about you should to go out from here and uh, help yourself, uh, yourself and your family. Absolutely. And um, I don't found way. I don't found way. Only this was the way after when I is enter was uh, a lot of possibility for uh, the young people where they appear in the, such a uh, looks like international news or looks like this. They get help to get out from Yarmouk camp. But how did you get out? I get out with paying a lot of money for the soldier, and this is uh, was help with a friend from Hamburg, Monica Fabricius. She helped me and support me with some money to get out from Yarmouk because it was not. This is, was only the way to get out from Yarmouk to Damascus. We was talking, and after I walk, and it was so dangerous to Turkey. And after that, I come by boat. To, to Germany with the Balkan route, yeah. Mm. And how long did that journey take you? Between four months, three, four months, yeah, around that time. 2,500 kilometers. And that is a terrible journey as well. Even there you saw people dying. Yeah. And yeah. from so. that journey, even then, music came out. Could you play us medley? Because medley is uh, music from the east and the west. That is when you pass through. Yeah. You go from one place to the other. And then explain I, I, to us what the journey yeah, meant to you. Yeah, it's uh, the journey. It's meant with also this is piece how I was studying in the conservatorium and playing all those beautiful classic piece for Mozart and Beethoven and Tchaikovsky and Rachmaninoff and Bach. And how I was also during the, the Syrian war, I never used this music because my community, they don't understand. This is harmony and they, they have different taste of the music. The oriental music is different from classic music. And also my journey to, to come to Europe, it was also kind of a transform for me from where I was and where I will go to be. And so you this wanted is what to I reach Germany, right? Yeah, I want to reach play a safe place. It maybe was uh, the first place uh, in Griechenland, but was uh, they push everybody from Griechenland to the next land. And this was Serbia, Macedonia, Hungary, and yeah, everybody push you, push you to, to arrive to Germany. This is mean you don't have really a chance. In 2015 was Frau Merkel, she say, wir schaffen das and was the, the border war, was open and every land was pushing the, the refugee to the next and was the last Austria and they tell you you would like to stay here or to go to Germany and you see 95% from the people was decide to go to Germany, not to stay in Austria. The first decision where you really get to say, I will stay in Austria or to go to Germany was in Austria. Tell me, when it was the first time that you felt safe? Yeah, maybe when I, when I arrived to, uh, to Griechenland, I have 
wonderful journalism from Rai TV. I remember him. He came there and he said, yeah, wonderful. I, I know you from the videos. Tell me about, did you feel safe now? I, I, I tell him directly, I feel safe when I see my wife and my children. And this is what happened in 2018 with help with a lot of uh, German, uh, I'm sorry, 2016 with a lot of uh, support from the German friend and the German community here. It's take only one year to bring my wife and my boys to Germany. And we was living in Wiesbaden. And in this day when I meet him in Frankfurt airport and I see they are safe in Germany, I feel safe. Before that, I never see, feel safe. Well, I want to ask you also how it is then now living there in Germany. But please play first medley. Yeah. medley and Eastern and Western music combined. Yeah. But how much uh, you were, you came to Germany 2015 and you were, let's say, already famous because of the video of your MOOC. How much has that video helped you and even being a musician, an artist, that was important in your life now in Germany, how much has that helped you? It's helped me a lot with uh, 
Sure, the, the video in during the Syrian war was really uh, horrible for me because it's put me in every list, in the every blacklist. IS need me and the regime in Syria, the Syrian regime need me. But when I come to Europe, the, the video helped me a lot. And those, uh, not only the video was a lot of videos before this uh, video, the green t-shirt, but this is what the video of Nira Saeed in very good quality. Sure, we should speak about Nira Saeed. He's killed in the secret police present in 2018 because he, he the, made those videos. He is your, the friend who, the photographer, the, photographer. the filmmaker who filmed you. Yeah, Nira Saeed. He uh, was catch in 2016. He also need to get out from Yarmouk. And they kill him in the secret police in 2018. We spoke about more than 65,000 prisoners in Syria was killed in the same way. Also, my brother, we don't know anything about him since eight years. Yeah. Um, and uh, this is and a he video was killed because of lot. the video that he made yeah. of you, because... Not only the, the video, because he was photographer in Yarmouk. He have a lot of photos, more than thou thousands of photos. When you Google the name of Nira Saeed, you see all his photos. It's the, um, showing the, the whole community in Yarmouk camp in, and south of Damascus. And he making a lot of videos and make uh, news, uh, newspapers. And this is the, the reason why they catch him, because it's not allowed to be free newspaper in Yarmouk or in I Syria. Have, are you still in touch with the people from Yarmouk that have been so important to you? Do you know where they are now? Yeah. It's very important for me to, to be in touch with them. They are in a lot of places, somebody in Turkey, somebody in the secret police, uh, not secret police, I am not in the contact with the guys in the secret police, but I know about them. And uh, a lot of uh, guys and uh, families in uh, Deir al Balud. this is also another camp from Tent. It's not really camp, looks like a remote camp. Uh, near Idlib, living in very horrible situation. Now, the the winter it's coming. Uh, this is the third or fourth number of winter came to those people in very horrible way, and they still living in such a situation. Nothing changed with for him, and I'm still in contact with Abu Mahmoud. I'm still in contact with Ziad, the man with the forget my name. Yeah, and they ask me for help, and I try to help, but what we can do, it's, it's really a horrible situation. The only help to they can get out from Syria. After nine years, we don't found any way, situation to, to really bring the peace for those people. You said that they can't get out. I mean, when you went, it was easy. Yeah. I would like that you tell me, what is your impression of Europe, of the Europe you have met. You first landed in Greece, then you were in Germany where you, you found uh, also a home, you could bring your family, yeah. but now things have changed. How do you feel? If I would ha ask you, describe me Europe, what would you say? When I need to describe it in my eyes, Alice Pianist and Ayham Ahmad, Europe is so great for me because it's helped me and bring my family, the German community here, helped me to be also more famous, to play concert every day before Corona and to make income from music. But when I tell it in the another eyes of Syrian guy, Europe, it's horrible. And a lot of people don't can bring the family together because uh, the bureaucracy, it's impossible. You should wait sometime four years or five years to bring your family. And the family living in such a situation in the camps looks like they're a balut or near the border in Turkey. You don't can sit three days there and how the family can sit there for four or five years. And when you speak about another nationality, refugee from Africa, this is catastrophe for him. Europe it doesn't make any things because he is not allowed to get uh, Azul and track in, in Europe. And this is uh, the three level of Europe. Le yeah, the level of music, uh, everywhere we are welcome, all the concert open for you and you can play because maybe I am famous or that, but I don't need to speak about this exception. Europe, uh, it's make a lot and it's filled with a lot of things.
because you have music and you can also communicate, so people are not afraid yeah. of you. But people who live in a camp, they can get angry. What happens to persons who have to wait for one, two, three, four years? What happens to their minds? Yeah, sure. It's, uh, it's, um, they have a lot of mentality problem. A lot of people really uh, try to kill himself. Imagine father, he have five children in Aleppo, and he's waiting in Frankfurt or in Wiesbaden, in Hans Predostrasse, in the camp. He can live in peace, but all his mind with his children in Aleppo or in, in another place, he don't can live. And this is guy, he kill himself. He throw himself from the uh, five uh, floor and yeah, he don't can complete the life because he get this question from his family, what happened and what, why you don't help us? Pl please bring us to the peace. And he begin thinking what he can do. He should wait and wait and wait and wait. And in the end, he don't can go on with the life and he kill himself. This is one story in our camp in Hans Predostrasse. Ahmed, uh, where, where as we, you we surely live. know, I mean, many uh, politicians in many countries in Europe they no. say, now we can't take more refugees, enough is enough, because no. we can't manage. And what would you tell them? What would be an argument to make them say again what Merkel said, wir schaffen das? Yeah. I think uh, we don't need, I am living in Germany, but I don't need to give the good example about Germany. But in Germany, it's really, they make it. Merkel, she have via schaffen das. She don't make all the work. Everybody, the community here support the refugee. We have more than 350,000 people working in the system, paying Steuer, taxes. I pay Steuer, all everybody working in Germany from the refugee and the German and everybody also foreigners paying uh, Steuer. And this is good for the country. The country can recover in very good way and can support the people in the time of corona, yeah? I'm because this is about Shoya. coronavirus. I mean, you are still composing now and you're working also, yeah. and you met a German composer, com uh, Edgar Knecht. But before yeah. we introduce Edgar Knecht, I would like that you uh, play us something that you have composed in Germany now, the recent pieces. Wonderful.
عنده منحدرات التلال وهنا عنده منحدرات التلال ها يا طني يا طني So tell us about this song. Take me home. Every time when you think, when you wake up in the morning and you remember the, the whole situation and what happened and you, I look to my children and thinking about the future for my children and thinking about what happened with me, the whole darkness and unhappy, and happy together, it came with this... Uh, very full music and take me home also how I can see the country from far away and uh, the, the, the whole communication of come back or stay there sure I am Palestinian refugee in Syria this is mean I don't have any chance in Syria when Syria getting fine and build again yeah maybe the Syrian people will come back but what about the Palestinian refugee living there? We have more than 750,000 Palestinian refugee living in Syria. What about those people? And I am one of them. And so you I feel think that you have lost your that. home. You have lost your home forever. Really? Yeah. This is what I feel. And this is what take me home. It's still a lot of angry and darkness and also happiness because I found a new home for my, at least for my children. Ahmed and Kinan and Sarah. I have three children now and I'm so glad they speak German and they found a friend here in the German community. And maybe it will be for me, Yarmouk camp here in the heart and Palestine in the mind and Syria also in the another heart. But um, for my children, it's all that it will not mean nothing. When you ask Ahmed and Kinan about Yarmou camp, they say, oh, where is this Syria? It's only um, bomb and, yeah, they remember the war of Syria. Just but they don't do remember the sweet. Them, when you tell them about Yarmouk, what do they tell you? Yeah, they say, oh, there it's a bad place. And uh, sometimes they watch the videos in YouTube. And they say, nice, the tema, it's nice, but why you are living in such a situation? I don't explain a lot. They are eight okay. years and five years, but I write uh, the book in German. One day they will read German and they will understand why I am here and Acham, why I bring him here. Acham, you know you are in Germany and you are working together with a German composer, Edgar yeah. Knecht. I'm so uh, glad how he is did here. that happen and what music is coming out of this encounter? How did you meet and what is this meeting bringing you? I mean, if he can also come, wants to say something, that would be nice, but you first tell. Sure. Um, it was wonderful meeting uh, in the Opera House here in Kassel. 
uh, I get invitation from Edgar to play one of uh, his concerts and to meet and to discuss maybe about how we can work together. And we was preparing the project or the program for this concert was before we don't think about we will go on with that. Only was concert and we'll play it in the opera house. And I meet such an amazing uh, composer and human and we was talking a lot more than playing piano and I found... Uh, yeah, he, he come to my heart and we speak a lot and we discuss but and did, the music, <laughs> did your music change and did his music change? So if Edgar sure. wants to answer that, because he is, um, you can call him in and you also compose the song together. Edgar Knecht, jazz composer from Germany. Hi. Hi, good evening. So how did your music change? Yeah, of course, it was a uh, very exciting uh, uh, and very intense encounter with Ayan uh, in all the terms that I am uh, told uh, musically, but uh, um, in the same way, uh, yeah, from, from person to person, from we, we, we became friends very, very, uh, very um, fast and, and intense. And yeah, of course, this has a big influence to the music. Uh, it was the first time that I had the, uh, such an... Such an um, intense uh, encounter with uh, Syrian music and uh, Arabian music and uh, yeah and uh, the, the, the rhythms the count the kind of melodies how the, how they are arranged and played and so on and uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I think this is uh, has become um, an influence to my music and I, I wrote a song I wrote two songs based uh, on um, on Arabian folk songs Okay, uh, in I fact, I would like to, to ask Ahan yeah. to uh, play us this last song that you wrote together. And that would be our farewell. If you could play us this song. Yeah, I will play it. Yes. yes. Thank yes. you. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, thank you very oh, much for your you. music, for your time, oh, and you. I wish you good luck for your life and for your music. Thank you so much. And also for you all. Thank you. Thank you.